forward, and it's you know again it's it's it's, it's the same. Um, so so it, it, it corresponds pretty. Specific to the pair of the That's that's right. That's right. Um, with with you know obviously some some variability. Um, okay, so uh, just to kind of characterize the, the total redundancy in the population. Um, one of the things you can ask is that if uh, if you're if you're one ganglion cell uh, sitting there, um, what is the, the probability that a neighbor at a certain distance away is going to be significantly redundant uh, with you? So if you're looking at a neighbor that's like right on top of you, there's a little more than forty percent chance that that neighbor shares you know redundancy with you. Okay, so, so that's pretty high. Um, drops off at you know 200, 250 microns away, uh, and so. If you just add up, you know, how many correlated neighbors you have, it's about 100. Okay? So one ganglion cell shares significant correlation with 100 other ganglion cells in, in, in its vicinity. Uh, of course, the, the level of that redundancy is, is not terribly high. So this is the average redundancy uh, for cells that, that, that are uh, already significantly redundant, and it's, it's about 5 or 10% okay, per pair. Okay, so, uh, so it's not a, a huge effect for pairs of neurons, but, but basically because you have so many redundant neighbors, it, it ends up being a really large effect in, in the population. And so one way of, of quantifying that is to calculate what we call uh, the overrepresentation factor. So the idea is we take the, you know, here's cell A, we take the raw redundancy of all its neighbors B, add that up over all the neighbors, and divide by cell A's uh, visual information. So when cell A has, you know, whatever, five bits per second visual information, um, you know, how, uh, what's the total redundancy with neighbors, and, and so that's, that's measuring, given cell A's information, how many times over is that re-represented by other neurons somewhere uh, on, on the retina? Okay, and you average over all the cells A, and you get about 10. Uh, this is what the over-representation factor is. And, and uh, I just want to point out, you know, this isn't a measurement of Redundancy in the entire population. That calculation is is, is very hard, but uh, in in kind of a, under some some very simple assumptions, uh, kind of uniform correlations, you can you can connect this to the population information. And, and if these assumptions are true, then information in the population is the sum of all the cells divided by this overrepresentation factor. So, uh, <coughs> roughly speaking. Uh, you know, it's reasonable to, to kind of think that the population redundancy is, is roughly a factor of 10. Okay. So, uh, so th that's really pretty high. Um, uh, and so, <clears throat> so it leads to kind of a, a you know, curious situation. Um, you know, when we look at, at single neurons, we see their responses are very sparse, very precise, uh, a lot of information uh, contained in, in, in each spike, and they're sort of efficient in, in, in a variety of ways, but then we look at the, at the population, it's massively redundant. You know, so what happened to, what happened to this single neuron uh, efficiency? Um, and you know, uh, just, to, just to quickly point out, uh, probably a lot of you are, are, are familiar with you know, ideas about redundancy reduction as one of the, the purposes of, of uh, retinal processing. Um, uh, you know, this has been a very influential uh, idea for the last 50 years, um, and at least at the level of the entire population, it's just completely wrong. That's that's not uh, what the retina is is doing, uh, and and you might wonder uh, why. <laughs> you know, uh, redundancy reduction seems like a, like a, a good idea. You get a more efficient code. Um, so so why is this code so so inefficient actually? Um, okay, so the idea I'm going to pursue here is that redundancy is, is uh, really a beneficial uh, property of the population code, and it allows the, the population code to be fast, unambiguous, and, and, and low error. Okay, so, so let, me, let me kind of uh, uh, unpack this argument uh, a little bit more. Um, okay, so if you take a little bit of a, of a step back, uh, one of the things you kind of realize about about vision uh, is that the way that you use it, you know, kind of every day, uh, vision is extremely deterministic and, and reliable. You know, so if I do something like, you know, I say, you know, how many fingers am I holding up? You know, uh, what's the chance that you got that wrong? Uh, you 
It's essentially zero. And uh, you know, you do things like you walk out into the street, you know, you look, you see there are no trucks coming, you walk, you, you, you sort of, uh, you're, you're trusting that, that visual uh, discrimination well enough that you, know, you could be killed if, if you were wrong about that. Um, but you know, for just many, many uh, everyday tasks, you just get it completely uh, correct. And, and there's essentially zero error. Um, but of course, when you look at any one visual neuron in the retina, the visual cortex, it's, it's really very noisy. Um, okay, so, <clears throat> you know, so, uh, so, so this kind of idea that uh, the population needs to be highly deterministic to account for our kind of normal behavior uh, is something that, that I think hasn't really been explored very much. Um, okay, another point that, yeah? In which animal was this experiment uh, done? Um, th this is done in, in the salamander, uh, and... It's a highly high, high visual animal. Yeah, I mean, it uses vision to, to feed uh, and to escape prey. And you expect the, to have a different results in, for example, the mouse or rat that is more smelly animal? Um, so we've, we've looked at this in, in guinea pig, and it seems to be about the same. Uh, number. So, uh, you know, it, uh, this total redundancy I think could easily be a factor too, different in, in different species. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it's definitely the case in mammalian species that, that, that we've recorded from that there's, there's a, a similar kind of issue that, uh, you know, yeah, when, when you uh, define cells with just one type, they don't overlap that much. and you know, they have kind of minimal redundancy in a single mosaic, but then there are like 20 cell types. Um, uh, so, so the, the population redundancy is, uh, is, is, is going to be quite high, and uh, you know, we haven't uh, measured it as, as kind of in as much detail in, in those other species as, as in the salamander. Um, uh, okay. Um, let's see. So, uh, so, so another thing that I think is, uh, is is really quite important is uh, this idea that you don't know ahead of time that there are one of two possible stimuli in the world. Um, you know, a lot of uh, experiments that uh, you know that have that have been done to study uh, how you uh, discriminate among visual stimuli often you know have two alternatives, uh, and you want to take the population and figure out which of the two alternatives uh, had occurred. Um, but that's 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 not the what happens in real life, you know, what happens is uh, it could be anything. Uh, and you look at it and kaboom, you, you know, you sort of see what it is. Um, so more typical task is detect the target stimulus versus, versus everything else. Um, another uh, important characteristic is recognition is, is often uh, very fast uh, in many cases. So that places additional constraints on, on the population code. Um, and another thing that, that I think is, is really important but, but isn't considered a lot is that you know, your visual system can detect a number of objects and they can you know, be anywhere and they can kind of be present or pop up at, at any time. Uh, and so what that means actually is that false alarm events are, are, are really, really important. You know? So if you think, uh, let's say you've got some uh, you know, detection circuits in, in your brain that recognize you know, spiders. Uh, that's kind of environmentally important uh, uh, stimulus, um, you know, so